Hi, this is John Lee, and thanks for tuning in to Synfig video tutorial number three, Adding Layers. And you can follow along on Synfig's website, if you like, by heading over to www.synfig.org, click on Documentation on the main page, and click on Manual, then click on Adding Layers under the Diving In chapter, and here's what we'll be covering in today's video. So there are two things I want to talk about with respect to Synfig's layer system. The first is that every single element, object, or special effect even, get assigned to their own layers. So notice here I've just created the circle and rectangle, and if you head over to the layer panel window, sure enough, the circle and rectangle are on separate layers. And unfortunately, it isn't possible to combine these two layers to have the circle and rectangle on one layer. But the advantage of having every element on a separate layer is that it gives you greater control over your project. You can tweak every single element to your heart's content, every element and parameter, etc. But the disadvantage is that a project can very easily balloon to hundreds or even thousands of layers, so you can get lost trying to find specific elements or to manipulate elements within your project. The way around that is that you have to be really organized clearly label your layers, and Synfig gives you a couple of tools to help manage a project that has a large number of layers with um, group layers and the ability to link elements so that they function as one unit, um, and the ability to select elements on your canvas. Notice that I've selected the rectangle and it automatically highlights the rectangle layer. So you can select elements on your canvas and it'll automatically take you to that layer within the layer panel window. But still, you have to be organized and be clear about labeling um, the layers within your project and group them. The second thing I want to talk about Synfig's layer system is that um, every single layer can potentially affect all the layers beneath it. Similar to the way Photoshop and After Effects work, where those programs have an adjustment layer that can apply effects to all the layers beneath it. Uh, in Synfig's case, though, Literally every single layer is a potential adjustment layer. And you can apply all different kinds of effects with all the layers beneath it. And we'll get we'll cover that in, later on in the video. But for now, let's see how la Synfig's layers works by creating a rectangle with a gradient on it. So let me just delete this circle that I created earlier. And I uh, created this rectangle by selecting the rectangle tool, left clicking and dragging across. But now I'm gonna select the gradient tool in the toolbox, left clicking with my mouse and then dragging across to the lower right corner. Now notice it didn't do exactly what we wanted. It created the gradient fill, but it didn't create the gradient fill on the rectangle. It created it over the entire canvas. So the way to fix that is click on the gradient fill layer, make sure it's above your rectangle layer, and head over to the parameters window on the lower left corner. Under the blend method option, notice that it currently has composite selected. Click on composite, click on the arrow menu button, and you'll see all these different options like overlay, screen, hard light, multiply, divide, add, subtract. These are all common blend effects that you'll see in other art programs. We're interested in the straight onto effect. And when we click it, Notice that now the gradient has applied the effect to the rectangle layer only. Um, and that's because the rectangle layer is beneath the gradient layer. If we had created other layers beneath the gradient layer, those layers would also have the gradient fill effect on it as well. If we wanted to limit the gradient effect to only a certain layer, like in this case, let's say we only wanted the gradient effect to affect the rectangle layer, we would select the gradient layer and then alt click the rectangle layer. I think it's command click on the Mac. And right click these two highlighted layers and you'll see this little menu and choose the group layer option. Now the gradient layer and the rectangle layer are within its own group, which means that the gradient layer is now only going to affect the rectangle layer. It will not affect any of the layers um, below the gradient layer as long as those layers are outside the group layer. So let me just show you how that works. With the group layer currently selected, I'm going to change the fill color to another color, red in this case. 
so that uh, we can identify these other layers more clearly from the rectangle layer. And now I'm going to create a circle layer, two circles, one big, one small. And notice that the circle layers are above the rectangle layer, and that's because we had the group layer selected. So anytime you create an object, it the object is created above the currently selected layer. So I had group layer selected, and notice the two circles are above the group layer. If we wanted to move them below the group layer, we would select these two circles and then choose the lower layer button. And there we go. Now the two circle layers are below the group layer, but notice that the gradient effect still hasn't affected these two circle layers. And again, the reason is because we've encapsulated the group layer, uh, the gradient layer, and the rectangle layer within a group layer. So even though these two circle layers are beneath the gradient layer, they are not affected. So that's one way you can control the scope of an effect on layers beneath the uh, affecting layer. Now uh, let's take a look at um, layer hierarchy in more detail. I'm going to create a circle layer above this gradient layer, but within the group layer. And let me change the color again so we can differentiate these, the circle. So with the gradient layer selected, now when I create the circle, it'll create this circle, you guessed it, above the gradient layer, but still within the group layer. And again, notice the effect has not affected this black circle that we've just created because it is above the gradient layer. But watch what happens when I create an effect above this newly created black circle. Let me right click the circle, choose new layer, choose blurs, and choose blur. Watch what happens. There we go. Now, the blur layer has blurred the circle layer and the gradient rectangle, but again, hasn't affected the circles, circle layers beneath this blur layer because they are outside of the group layer. But now watch what happens when I create a, an effect above the group layer. So with the group layer selected, I'm going to right click again, choose new layer, choose transform this time, and let's choose the rotate effect. Now watch what happens when I rotate this object. The rotate layer affects every single layer beneath it, and that includes the black circle the gradient rectangle, and the two red circles that we created earlier. And that's because the group, the uh, rotate layer is above all of these layers, um, but the rotate layer isn't within a group layer, so that's why it's affecting all of these layers. Anyway, that's a little taste of the way Synfig's layer system works. Um, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching today's video. Please click like and or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next Synfig video tutorial where we'll be covering creating shapes. We want to get into more advanced shapes uh, beyond circles and squares if we want to create interesting characters, and we'll be covering that in the next, in the next video. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Legit, but ain't shit. Was what I have to hit me, suckers when it quit. Shit, that's what they're all saying. Call me top wrong, cause